As you may know, the mysterious continent Akavir hosts many beast races, and in many times throughout our long history, their people have invaded Tamriel, showing their military prowess and great strength. And while it is well known that the Seishi, the cunning race of snake men, had much influence over the current empire, especially under the Cyrodiil family, that time is gone. And what Yakavir influence that did exist over the Empire has now waned over countless centuries. <laughs> bah. It's not within my patience to make you understand the myths and legends of thousands of years ago. For I come to you with a different story. A man's search for his son, which ended in tragedy, but also in destiny. The man's name comes from the old Seishi tongue, and it is Katsuragi, and it is I who tells his story, the one who he called grandfather. Yet I am neither. I am a long old remnant of the old god who lost his way many centuries ago, when I first came to this land, the land you call Tamriel. I came upon such a man who could speak in the dragon tongue, and after having slain many dragons in my home of Akavir, I know the sound well. It was my lord, Remen the First, he who I laid down my swords in front of and swore my life to. And I remember when I served his son, Remen the Second when he went to Skyrim to survey the brothers of mine's create of Alduin's wall. And I remember training the first fighters who would eventually become the Blades. I served the sons of Remen until I heard of the death of the last, and his son as well, the young Julek. I could not bring myself to serve, not the brood of Cyrodiil, so I went into hiding, leaving my brothers and the blades to become nothing more than the shadows of what I knew them to be. For two eras I stayed away from both mare and men, watching them both crumble and sweat from afar until finally I gave in to my own depression. To feed, I preyed on the weak and the lost bandits and thieves, eating them and gaining nothing. It was at this time that I discovered my destiny. Oh, and yet unto him was much tragedy from even the start of his journey. For I found him and his father already broken men dragged his only remaining slaves in a meager caravan. The slavers pulling them along had thought themselves lucky, and made a considerable sum by selling off the family and relatives of these poor fools, who had such unique appearance to make them exotic and desirable. And yet they passed too close to the fort at Serpent's Trail, long abandoned and looted by adventurers, where I was meditating on the service of my lord in the days long past, hoping for a sign at this turning of the age. For many years I had watched Tamriel fall to ruin, and had been praying for many days for something to guide me in the last day of my quest. As the caravan approached, I was able to gain a good look at the boy and his father, I think, the man who traveled with him. I recognized the look of the men, the hair, the keen eyes, even in their current state, and the tattoo across the boy's face, a red dragon, not like the weak sigh in the Imperials bastardized for their flags, but a raw image. It reminded me of the red dragons of home, now long gone. These were Akaviri men, had to be. 
Impossible, perhaps, but true, as no one of my blood would ever mistake them for anything but, for we had swallowed them to become them so long ago. They were an answer to my prayer in physical form. And in this way, I rescued the man and the boy child from their certain abuse and eventual enslavement. And yet, I was correct. They were from a small village that started eras ago by some of the men of my company who I had lost track of. Not like me, but warriors pressed into service by me and my cadre just before we made land fall into Tamriel when we first came. I had forgotten that many of them served the battle at Pale Pass, and too, had been pardoned all to the last, as had I, and the rest of the Dragon Guard. These were the descendants of that population, and a great sadness came over me. Even here, on a new world with a new beginning from the pain we had caused them, they were eventually discovered only to be exploited by the current population of Cyrodiil? Was I not, say she? Was it not all for me to take and not take at my will? No. I had changed in all these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years to something quite different. After we had traveled for a while, the boy asked me, where are you taking us? I had been silent all that time, but now I took the advantage of the opportunity to speak to them, not as Dragon Guard, but as Akaviri. I'm taking you to my home, I said. The boy started. He did not know what to do. Are you intending to eat us, Seishi? <laughs> no, I'm not, I said. I had expected this. One does not easily deny what they are any more than what they may have become. How do you know that word? I asked the boy. I've read it, he said. The Seishi ate all the men of Akavir, but I know what my mother and father told me. There are some left, but you hunt us down like fine dining. <sighs> the man hissed at that same word. Truly do my brethren still hunt Akaviri men to this day, even here. Why? I decided it did not matter. Such would not happen to these two. I told them, if you wish to kill me, do so. You my sword, as we took it from you first. I only wish to persevere and preserve what we remember, and that what we are and cannot be. For I believed even then that one of these two, I wasn't sure which, would follow in the steps of my Lord Remen. One of them was Dragonborn, as the Nords call it. Had to be. In the years that followed, I trained them and raised them as best I could. But nonetheless, they both left in one way after another. The man, who I thought was their father, went to join the Blades, and unfortunately found his end at the hands of the Thalmor. And Katsuragi the boy, who grew up to be a fine swordsman, but lousy with conversation and friends, he did marry, albeit briefly, and had a son. But while he wanted to raise the child as I had done him, which, <laughs> being a snake, I cannot say I understood the child rearing process well, his wife decided to leave him in his martial ways and take the child back to her parents, where he would become a chef to a noble family. Ha! <laughs> 
being Akaviri, if in no other than look would have the boy in high demand. But in again living with the boy now man, I learned that while I may have taught him much in how to fight and craft, I had no expertise in how to teach him to be civilized as put it in Cyrodiil. But nonetheless, Katsuragi returned from home one day after buying supplies with good news. A courier had found him after much effort, asking everyone in the nearby town who Katsuragi was, and ran into him almost by chance. It seems that Katsuragi's son had indeed taken his father's teachings to heart and had left to join the Empire. It seemed there was a civil war of succession brewing, and he was sent to support the Empire's troops. Again, it seemed that destiny had spoken. If these two were not the Dragonborn, as I had thought they might be, perhaps his son. I then took Katsuragi by the shoulders and said, You shall go to Skyrim. Get there however you can and find your son. Protect him as I have done for you all these years. He may yet be the one. Katsuragi looked at me, dear-eyed. Dragonborn, he says. I released him and hesitated, thinking back to my lord and the first time I had heard him speak his thum, something deeper and more rich than any Kiai I had ever heard from Akavir. Now I know not if he is Dragonborn, but I know this, I told him. Alduin may yet return, as we have read, but he will find his prey far better prepared than he had imagined. I have lived long to have a black dragon come out of the sky and give me orders. Hmm. How Katsuragi got to Skyrim, I know not. I have followed him for a while. But just before the border to Skyrim, there was a skirmish. It seemed like the rebel leader was involved, but it prevented me from making my way into the country right then. I prayed to the soul of my lord, Remen I, asking him to help guide the only child I have ever known to exist for me, to finding his son, and his true destiny. But it wasn't until now did I learn, after making my way into Skyrim and making it here myself, that a blue Khajiit and a man with a red dragon tattoo on his face had not only dealt severe blows to the Thalmor in Skyrim, but made his way to Skyhaven Wall, the hiding place of Alduin's Wall. Oh, my cadre, my dragon god brothers, I pray that my grandson finds his true way here and understands the legacy which lays before him. Will you, Katsuragi, remember my teachings even now? If he does not... And Alduin slays my last and only son. Then by the shell of creation, I will bring Alduin down from the sky by my own scaled hands and swallow him whole with my own unlocked jawbone. This Seishi warrior, this Seishens, will eat dragon at last.